Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, my name's Kit and this is my world. Thank you very much for joining me. Um, in this episode, I'm going to be discussing the mood reading curse. This is a curse that I suffer from and I'm aware that lots of other people have this as well. The uh, situation where you can only read something if you're in the mood to read it. And Obviously, as a reader, that's somewhat limiting. As a booktuber, as a booktube creator, it's pretty much a disability. So I'm going to be discussing the mood reading curse from my own perspective. I'm not an expert on this. I don't know how other people experience this thing. Um, but this is what it's like for me being a mood reader. I've, I've organised it into four approximate things, four headings, um, just so that I can keep my thoughts in some semblance of order. Um, and the first one is the obvious one. It describes the problem. I'm unable to enjoy a book if I'm not in the mood. Um, for me personally, this manifests itself as a voice in my head. Uh, but it's a friendly voice um, that pops up at some point shortly after I start a book, if it's a book that I'm enjoying. Um, and this book simply says, we're in. And that's the that's the moment that I realise that I will be finishing the book. I, I, I've been captured, my imagination has been captured, and um, I'm interested, I'm invested, I'm enjoying it, I'm in the mood. Um, this is a voice that I crave, and I always hope it will visit me soon. Um, but quite often I start a book and the voice never comes, and my attention wanders, I realise that I'm not enjoying the book, I'm not in the mood, and I just have to put it down. This happens with the majority of new books that I start, and it's becoming increasingly difficult to find that magic voice in my mind that tells me we're in. I have a lot of distractions in my life, more than I've ever had before, and um, I'm reading in a different way as well. So all of that affects my ability to be in the mood for a book, and um, that's a problem. The other obvious uh, disadvantage of being a mood reader, I find, is that it limits the breadth and scope of the kind of material I'm capable of reading. Uh, certainly the type of material I'm capable of sustaining and taking in. Being in the mood for a book um, generally means that that book is in one's comfort zone. Uh, it's a book that is of a type that you like, you enjoy, uh, you feel safe with, you feel familiar with. It's comfort of the familiar. Um, in most people, this manifests as a genre preference. And in that sense, everyone's a mood reader, um, or at least the vast majority of people are mood readers. Um, they will be able to answer if you say, what's your favourite genre? Most people will have an answer for that. Um, in booktube world, a lot of people are into fantasy. And fantasy for the large portion of my life has been my favourite genre. I love fantasy. Um, I have been more passionate about fantasy in the past than I am currently. Um, starting booktubing has done funny things to my uh, to my reading habits, my reading tastes and my moods. Um, but that is the most fundamental uh, part of mood reading, I think, is just liking a genre. But then people like myself who are more... Um, tied down by their reading moods, um, take it a little bit further. And um, even within fantasy, uh, I still need the voice to tell me I'm in uh, for me to fully engage with a book. I will start many, many fantasy books and not be able to get into them because either the um, tone and voice of the um, the author is not um, clicking with me in some way, I need to find the author's voice engaging in some way. I need to feel safe and comfortable with them. Even if they have a new voice, which is something that I haven't previously experienced, there needs to be something about it that makes me feel I want to hear more of this person telling me a bedtime story. Um, the voice comes across on the page, and I don't really know any other way to describe it. If you know, if there is an actual word for this, if you know how 
better to describe it than I'm doing, please let me know in the comments. Um, the author's voice is all important. I need to want to listen to them. Um, and um, alongside that comes engagement in the story. I need to feel that the world is interesting and that the story I'm about to read is of interest and the characters. I need to be captured by the characters. I need to fall in love with at least one character very, very quickly and want to find out what's happening with them. Um, if I don't fall in love with the characters, then I'm lost. I'm more character-driven than plot-driven in the opening section of a book and then the plot takes over and I'm 50-50 at that point on. I'm, I'm very, very driven by the characters and wanting to follow them and understand them and get under their skin. I need interesting, very three-dimensional characters. Cookie cutters don't cut it for me. Um, but I also need an interesting, engaging and exciting plot. And it doesn't just have to be exciting in the entertainment sense, although that certainly helps. Um, I need the plot to challenge me, to make me think, to, to, uh, to stimulate my grey cells. I don't like the sense of having been dumbed down. I don't like it being too simple and I don't like being spoon-fed. Um, I like to work a little bit while I'm reading, uh, but at the same time I don't like to work too hard. If a book is making me spend too much energy thinking and analysing and understanding, then I don't get the emotional connection, I don't get in to the book. Um, so it's a very fine balance. And I suspect that balance is the essence of mood reading, at least for me. That's the mood part. I have so many very specific and exacting requirements in order to be able to enjoy a book so much that I can stay with it and sustain it right the way through, um, that um, it severely limits my reading palette. Um, so breadth and scope are limited within those confines. The third thing that I struggle with being a mood reader is my ability to study and learn. Um, this might take the form of if there's like a school book, if I need to, if I'm trying to learn something and I have a book, a textbook that I have to read in order to learn that thing, it's bloody difficult because I want to learn that thing. It might even be a thing I'm interested in. But if I'm not in the mood for reading that book, I won't be able to do it. This has been a problem throughout my life. I need to be interested and engaged in the book, even if it's a textbook about something that I want to learn about and have an interest in. And my eyeballs will scan across the words and I'll be turning pages and I'll get several pages in and I'll realise I haven't understood a single thing. It hasn't gone in. It, I haven't been listening um, because my mind wanders and I'm not engaged. It's all about engagement. So even a textbook, in fact, more so a textbook, it needs to be engaging. It needs to stimulate me in some sort of way that makes me captivated. Otherwise, it goes in one eye and out the other. The most recent issue that I've encountered being a mood reader is kind of due to having started booktubing. And it's that it causes feelings of bookish anxiety. I struggle more with uh, being in the mood to read a book when I feel obligated to read that book for the purposes of discussing it on booktube. Um, when reading becomes a chore rather than something that I want to do or sort of fall into through circumstances and find myself captivated. Uh, when I feel required to read something, it feels kind of like the studying thing again. Books become more like textbooks and it's even harder to become engaged and be in the mood for it. Um, but alongside that comes the anxiety that I'm just not 
a bookish enough person for booktube that i'm not good enough to be here that i'm a, a fraud in some way and i've joked on several occasions that at any moment the bookish community are going to discover that i'm not a proper booktuber and they're going to kick me out or i'm going to be tarred and feathered or something and um, even though books are in my blood i was raised in books i was surrounded by books all my life my grandma was an author my dad was the bookishest person i've ever met in my life there were stacks of books up to the ceiling and everything was about books. My whole life in many ways has been at least as much about books as it's been about the arts and culture and all the other stuff. Books have been very important so I should feel comfortable being a booktuber. I sh I'm a bookish person but yet because I'm a mood reader and I can't just pick up a book and read it from cover to cover and do a review like other people, even if it's a book that they're not interested in and don't enjoy, they will still read it from cover to cover and then review it. I can't do that. I'm very severely limited to only being able to read something if I'm in the mood, which is why I often reference the same books over and over again, because they're books that I read over and over again. I'm in the mood for the same thing. And so I just read the same stuff because that's what I'm in the mood for. Um, and that mood seems to also transfer itself to my discussions about books on Booktube. Um, if I'm do in, 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 I could do five tags and they've all got different questions. But if a certain book is in my mind, I'm in that mood, then that book is going to be the one that I use as an example in five different tags. It's an issue. Uh, it makes me feel boring. It makes me feel limited. It makes me feel like a charlatan. Uh, it makes me feel not worthy. It's a problem. Um, and it all stems from this mood thing. And this brings us to my last thing, which is a question. Can being a mood reader be cured? I'm asking genuinely. If you know the answer, please tell me in the comments. Um, I think it probably can. But what about people on the spectrum? I'm on the spectrum. I have Asperger's. Uh, I'm autistic. And there are other people who have ADHD. There are lots of people who are neurodiverse or neurodivergent, and their reading habits and their reading requirements differ from neurotypical people. So can mood reading be cured? even in someone who is neuroatypical. Again, I would really like to know. Help. <laughs> and on that rather alarming note, I think I'll call it a day. Thank you very, very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did and you haven't already, you know what to do. Please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, comment, share, do all the good stuff, and I will see you next time. See you later.